All right, thank you everybody for coming out today for the IGC Research Showcase. Um, this is going to be the roundtable on AI and society. I am Sierra Balcom, I'm an assistant professor at SUNY Korea, uh, and so in the Department of Technology and Society. I'll be moderating our session today. Uh, joining me on stage, I have uh, Professor Francois Ramon, right? he is in the Department of Computer Science. Uh, Brad Schreit, right? And he is a professor at Bad Human Chemical Engineering. And then finally, last but not least, Noel Chung, um, who is in the Business Management Department. Uh, so, we'll uh, tell you what their specialization is going to Thank you for that. Uh, <laughs> giving me that last night. Um, I'll just move around a little bit. Um, I'm going to go back to what I said. Noel Chung. Uh, electronic word of knowledge of online voice of consumer, uh, social media, and customer trust and betrayal. Brad here is, his research focuses on visual analytics for structural engineering, computer vision for various sensing platforms, and remote sensing and assessment. And as well as research, his research focus is computer vision applied to autonomous driving. So basically what we're going to talk about today is that we see AI changing at such a rapid pace. Um, you've probably heard a lot of different AI in the news, um, ChatGPT3, ChatGPT4, generative AI, and general AI. Um, I think that you can even see it in class these days. And so today we know that these technologies, we know that there's going to be a, quite a lot of disruption uh, in many ways of the technology. So on society. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with Francois, who's going to uh, tell us maybe describe a little bit about AI and tell us the difference between the types of AI that we might have heard, um, and maybe describe some of the benefits we might expect from the Okay, so um, basically I'm working in the field of AI, mostly applied to images and computer like how you were just with the room out of images, how you recognize like uh, face and picture, etc. Um, and this is, I think, very flattering for an expert that uh, we get more and more attention from the general public, I would say. So I think these days we cannot spend a day without someone to do something about AI. But it's a bit frustrating, it seems that everybody is becoming expert in AI. Though. And I think there are a lot of misconceptions of what exactly is artificial intelligence. Um, something interesting, for instance, as someone working in that field is we feel rarely employ the term of artificial intelligence. We tend to be a bit more accurate about what we're talking about. We use the term of machine learning, for instance, which is closer to the reality of the system we're developing. Uh, we have to be clear, actually, of when we speak about artificial intelligence, what are we talking about? I think it's important to talk about the term itself. What do we call intelligence? I think the term artificial is clear for everybody. We want to create a form of intelligence based on some, I don't know, some, some computation, some computers, basically. So, what is intelligence? There are a lot of confusion. I can see people mixing up what is intelligence and sentience, for instance. Sentience is like to have the consciousness that we exist. And for instance, the gorilla is sentient, because if you show mirror to the, to the gorilla, you recognize that it exists. And you know that it has the ability to interact with the world. So are we, do we really want to replicate the intelligence of the world? Actually, we have gone past that for a long time. But what we want to replicate is this human intelligence. So I think AI should give us the name artificial human intelligence because that's our final goal that we all want to reach. Um, so, well, that, that's about that. Um, I, I will come back to this before saying like what the perspective of all this. I want to come back 10, 12 years ago when I started my PhD. Like back in this day, like if you were able to give an image of a cat, if you were able to tell me, well, this image contains a cat, it was basically a great success. Of course, now this is lawful. I mean, we went like much further than this. We are, I, I'm sure you all know about uh, ChatGPT, which is based on GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. So all those uh, models, they are what we call large language model, and they appear to be very effective. But that's a very recent technology that all came from new architecture, new design of your network that we call transformers. And 
everything came so suddenly, even by some of the most recognized experts in the field, you didn't expect like, such an explosion of artificial intelligence that starts to be like, uh, very effective and useful for everybody. Actually. So it's raising a lot of fear among the, the public, I think, but also a lot of hope on what we can do in the future with them. Um, and uh, yeah, especially like, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the social impact uh, later, so I will maybe give some of that same because I'm a bit too talkative now. Thank you very much. Uh, I think I kind of clarify a lot of our concepts that we've been discussing. So, Brad, can you follow up with how engineering is going to be affected by AI? Okay, um, kind of play a saying something AI is AI is great, but we know that's kind of magic, especially in So, I would like to first define engineering. Many here don't really know the engineering, we are not really mechanics. Engineering, I would define that theory to the practice, which is not an easy problem. So, many times we spend a lot of time and expense there to make it really realize. So, for example, uh, like nuclear power plants, airplanes, spaceships, and even cars and buildings and infrastructure like bridges and high rise buildings, it requires higher accuracy and uh, safety and reliability, which means AI is, is too many engineers, it could be, it's um, kind of like a concept that is that much real. But, you know, as you know, uh, technological advancement always has been realized in the direction that people make thought about. Right? So, nobody knows. If AI can show the accurate rate successful rate more than 95%, that may be one of the way that engineers can really actively use um, AI concept. Because, for example, if I move my arm here, the conventional engineer, we try to do many experiments to measure the strength of the bones and maximum power of the muscles and joints and angles and margins and every aspect of my arm, so we model it, we just map it, right? And then, after that, we just apply input, and then output is automatically comes up, because we have a model. But AI, there's so many definitions of AI, but the basic concept is, it's just a black box. We have lots of data. You don't know what's happening inside my arm. Yeah. I, I order my brain, and I move. That's it. So, which means we cannot easily improve the performance. So that is something I'm kind of afraid of, you know, uh, we can achieve more than 95% of accuracy or successful rate, you know, in the engineering session. So, yeah, um, yeah, I'm too much time to So I want to say something, I want to put you guys in the 17th century way. We human, mankind, we rely too much on power about mobility, like we have to carry cars and active and at the second century it has been realized because the engine was invented. Right? So uh, we gotta see, we gotta see AI become our new engine in the engineering part. That's the definition of my engineer. So yeah, that's that's all of my thank you very much. I, you know, I think that we talk about the 17th, 18th century um, in reference to the Industrial Revolution, and I think that you know, AI is definitely kind of the pivotal moment in history that people will be talking about for a long time to come. So thank you very much for that. Uh, Noah, can you give us the business management, maybe marketing perspective? Um, yeah, sure. Um, maybe we can think about artificial intelligence, as Uncle said. Like, when we human, uh, that we are interacting with the world, we can think about how we actually respond to the world and interact with the world. We have sensory organs. We collect information of the outer world and we process it. To process it, we need to recognize it. So we have eyes, we have ears, so we can hear something. And we can think about like we do have nose and our tongue and skins, but for the computer, artificial one, 
which is non-human. They do not taste, but they can still feel when we are thinking about the haptic function of your mobile phone in it. But still, it cannot taste, maybe it will in the future, and it cannot smell at this moment, but it may be able to do that in the future. So at this moment, computers can see computer vision, they can hear, they can analyze those audio information, and they understand these voices, they understand texts, they understand images. Now they are understanding videos, multimedia, and maybe they will be able to taste, taste and feel more uh, accurately. So that is how we understand about like intelligence after grasping this information from the outer world and understand and pro after processing it, understand the meaning of it. That is about understanding the situation. And why we want to understand situation from the marketing perspective and the psychologists, they are thinking that we collect information to understand what kind of situation we are at. We, under, we would like to um, predict what will happen and think about the possible modes and we would like to make decisions. Without the information, we cannot make any decisions. So that is kind of like what we are thinking about, artificial intelligence. So they can do this kind of a thing. Of course, they cannot make decisions, but uh, can provide some predictions which can help people to make decisions. So that is how we understand about the artificial intelligence. And the companies want to utilize this AI, artificial intelligence technologies for helping customers. So how they are doing that? They are utilizing voice recognition technologies. So customers can order products by their voice, via mobile app. They can elect their virtual assistant such as Apple Siri or Microsoft Cortana, Samsung's um, Bixby, order something for you just by your voice because they understand your voice. Or you can book your favorite restaurant. Or you can play your favorite music, like Alaska, play my favorite song for me. So that is possible because of the voice recognition technology. And they do understand tasks, therefore you can use chatbots and you don't need to wait in line, offline. You can just go to the mobile app, go to the chatbot, to your virtual agent. You can request to make your request for a specific information. And or you can file your complaint and they will understand your complaint and they will provide their answer immediately. Possible because they do understand your text, your written word is a natural language. What about the images? If you shop your skin cream, and if you go to the Shiseido platform, and if you provide some pictures of you, they will diagnose your skin condition. They also consider the weather. If you do the requests, make this kind of request during the summer, during the winter, they will provide different answers. So, they will help your choice of a screen cream. Also, if you are driving by some store of the KFC, they will understand your face. And you do not need to use your actual credit card or you don't need to uh, provide your cash. They will be able to make a media process of your payment. And the Amazon doing a similar thing, service free, group and mortar, offline store. When you go there, their video camera watches over your product choice, and then they understand the shopping list, and they will do the payment also. So that is possible because of these images, recognition, and the processing technologies. So this kind of feature also helps customers' decision making, helps companies processing this information, and help the customer during the transaction. Or, they, when they are shopping, online shopping, so when the customer search for a product, they provide some recommendation about some similar products or complementary products. So they do help customers' journey up to be a more easier and more smoother. So this is kind of how
how the companies provide this kind of a technical capabilities to make a better customer experience offline and online. And when they are doing that, they also provide some new innovative products, such as autonomous rabbits or autonomous vehicles. Probably you have seen some uh, uh, rabbits serving food at Triple Streets. So that's an example. And then some of the companies are utilizing rabbits to check their some supermarket chain, like Chinat, which is very popular supermarket chain in the Midwest area in the United States. They are making the robot to check the stocks on the store shelves. So they are making the robots to check it and report the shortest if there is any. So they are um, that the companies can reduce the labor cost for their products. So companies are utilizing AI to understand the customer better, thereby providing better products and services. In other words, more customized products and services. And from the business perspective, they can also improve their business efficiencies. Thank you very much, Todd. I'm really interested in these things myself, right, in terms of how businesses can provide services and services to the public based on their ability to pay for it. Um, in my term in technology society, I kind of look at things in a little bit more broadly um, because, yes, in the industry, we want to understand how we can improve get some you know, use of the data and AI to start to gain some um, scale, um, develop some new ways to meet these services and good producer goods. Um, but at the same time, in society, we have to balance some of these things. Right? Not everything, we have to see how are these benefits and even some of the negative parts, how are they distributed across society? Right? Um, and I think that often when we look at society, we think about the public and government, how do we develop some public policies, uh, institutions that determine where, who, who's going to benefit, who's going to make sure that the improvements that we make in AI actually reach everybody in the system. Um, I think that here it's important for us to think of that and think how does government provide support for our like, technology across you know, all of our different fields
we see more and more new people learning like based like a human, like mimicking all our senses and having some awareness about um, overall situation. So something much closer than we are now. More to towards the whole like general intelligence. So well like based on that you can imagine if you did that you can have certain consequences in society that are now inevitable. Actually now everybody has access to this technology. This is too late to stop it. When we talk about regulation, we think that's necessary. But like I've seen, for instance, in the past like two months, like many public figures and like researchers, they are very afraid of what will happen, rightfully so. And they are asking for regulation and they are requesting a pause in research in large models because they're afraid of missing. Right? I think the European Union, for instance, he started to take pressure on that. Okay, we will restrict the research in that field because it's too dangerous. But we cannot just stop somewhere in the world because everybody else will keep pushing them. So maybe the, the, the smartest way is that to, as if you democratize, to popularize this technology to everyone. Maybe it's the best way to say it's also in the meantime to develop proper regulation in different fields. Uh, for instance, like just to give like some idea of what danger it could cause for society. First one, to make sure we can recognize those type of uh, artificial intelligence. To be frank with you, that's already the case. We use like computer vision tracking detection already in military equipment for the past 10 years. So this is already here. But now we can go one step further. And that's right, that's a problem. And we need to find solutions for that. Another thing that people fear a lot these days, and like many people are talking to me about that, is that I'm, I'm afraid to lose my job. I see some people working like creative front, and my wife she's teaching design, you know, and everybody is like, well. Like now, we can envision what will happen in the future. I mean, you type a prompt to a uh, generating model, and you get a fantastic picture. Why would I pay a designer to do that instead? You know? And this is evolving very, very quickly. So what will happen with our employment? Even in teaching, you know? maybe AI will become a better teacher than me in the future. Right? So that, that's, I understand that people can be afraid of that. However, like the graph talk about the natural revolution, and I think it's a very good uh, parallel to what we're living now. Like if you go back to the beginning of the 19th century, and if you explain to those people like the job we are doing now, it will be completely foreign to them. Yeah, I mean, they have no idea about exactly working in factory means. They have no idea about what programming is, right? And probably we thought like losing all our jobs is just going to be a full reshape of basically our society as a well. whole. And here it's just like a few things people theory now, but I think it goes like much beyond that. So indeed regulation is important and probably many of you last week um, I've heard at least about Sam Hoffman, the, the CEO of OpenAI, that was invited somehow to the Senate to basically discuss about regulation and AI. And uh, so also a very interesting debate that we raised on that. And I think we're going in the right direction for this. In terms of business regulation, uh, in terms also of uh, like employment regulation, etc. So, so there was so much to discuss about that. I think we, we might have a very interesting thing to say in this regard. So. Right. So yeah, AI. I mean, it can be part of fun times. But um, and here everyone has different ideas, so I don't, I, I'm kind of afraid of saying something, my own opinion. But, uh, but I can, what I can say, and let me share one story. When I was like seven years old, I watched an animation called Wonder Kid. I can see you guys seeing so many smiling, I can imagine you. <laughs> but that was about like five minutes ago, worms and leaves and shut the gun and everything. It was the it says year of 2023, which it didn't happen. So um, people here they worry too much about the advancement of AI, but it's, it's not easy to tell. I mean, I would just find this example with nuclear power. We know how dangerous they are. We have we have nuclear bomb in the second world war, but we are actually using for the the problems we have we Korea we have a very good um, technological advancement on uh, nuclear problems but 
Yeah, I think that's a lots of energy source, but at the same time, that's a very dangerous stuff to deal with. But AI is kind of similar things compared to nuclear power, because we can use it, but it can be very dangerous once it is monopolized by one group or one country. Think about they conquer or they possess all the powers in the small place. That's basically the risk of the war. Remember back to the war, the second war, the second war. The first war was, a, was a, because of most likely the, the German had didn't have many colonies compared to the France and England. That was the main reason. So, but the good part of the AI development these days was very open source and was developed by the people, not from the company, not from the um, government. It is developed by the people, like by me, like Francois here. Everywhere. But um, it should be open to the public and that's the good direction, I think. But we have to keep our eye on um, if it is monopolized by some group, one or two groups that has specific technique that surpass every other um, technique. We have to we have our, keep our eye on the kind of um, um, drawbacks of the AI dark side. Otherwise, I think we, it can be, can be our um, major engine and solution to, to many engineers' concerns. Yeah. So, um, so when we are thinking about technology, there are some side effects. When we are thinking about calculator, use of calculator make people lazy in calculating numbers manually. Having the address book in a mobile phone, making people dumb in mem 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 memorizing or remembering our friends' phone number. However, they cannot be the reason to not use calculator or not to use the address book function of the mobile phone. So from that perspective, like it's better to think about the consequences, possible consequences or side effects of adapting technologies. I think that is the way to go when we are thinking about AI. But the problem is um, the business and the marketing scholars are thinking that the dark size of AI technology has less success, therefore less understood. And there are a couple of topics that we are focusing on. Although our good intention of the company's good intention is to better serve our customer by collecting more customer information and to and design the customized products, it is always okay with our customers. So the answer might be no. When you are thinking about, for example, if you are thinking about purchasing a car, and the car can collect your biological information, which can help you not to drive, not to drink drive, or when you are get sleepy during driving, it can generate some warning. If you can receive such benefits, are you okay to let the car collect your biological information and store your biological information for years as some company's database? and have some risk of letting the company to use such data for the other purposes. They will be able to understand your health condition. They probably able to diagnose your disease. You are really okay with that? If companies are selling the kind of car, how customer can trust if such technology is built in and they are not really collecting such information? which if they are fooled. So these root issues are actually related to to which extent companies can collect customer information and customers are really okay with that. So it's really to, related to the issue of data privacy. So at the abstract level, it is related to customer trust and betrayal. For example, if your biological information is used for the other purpose, which you are not happy with. So that is one issue that the business people and the marketing scholars are worrying about. 
and they are thinking that government needs to step in and think about some regulations about those data storage and data collection issues and so on. So that is one thing. Another thing that they are talking about is, um, as you mentioned, if some party has some great AI technology, it means that some company is more artificially intelligent. But they are maybe in a humane way, you know, they can be intelligent and becoming more intelligent with the better AI technologies. So it is like in the society, some companies is more intelligent than the other companies. Then is it okay for the company to dominate the market? Government needs to protect the health of the market. So they are the two issues that the marketers are thinking. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I think that here, what we see when Congress is calling up these executives from the AI companies, um, and they're really trying to get what we notice is that nobody knows the answer, right? <laughs> nobody knows the answer. They don't know what is at risk. You still have to define what are the risks. You see that the risks are also coming at us much faster than they could have predicted. Right? A lot of these AI experts are, are saying, oh, we didn't expect the technology to come online for at least another 10 years, if not longer. And so they had no idea that we, and they're the ones who are working closest with it. And so here, you know, the legislators are looking to, you know, to the experts who work with them most closely to understand what the problems are. Uh, but yet we still need to define what the problems are, we have to understand how those problems are going to Right? We're moving online with things that are happening digitally in ways that we haven't seen before. Uh, and so here, we don't even know what types of problems are going to emerge. Um, and then once we identify those, then that's when we actually create the policy, the mechanism that say, oh, this is a, a, a policy. We have to find the right balance of what the benefits are um, to balance you know, where we should stop, where we should draw the line. And that's where the policy comes in. We need to design things. You know, if you look to the, you know, the, the medical industry where the FDA regulates what drugs we're allowed to take, which companies are allowed to sell those drugs, what drugs are allowed to sell, and there's a whole testing process of determining is it safe, is it effective, should we be you know, selling it. There's a patent process, there's intellectual property that limits how long people are allowed to for those drugs to benefit from before other people can benefit from them. So these are the kinds of things that, again, in AI, we still have yet to scratch the surface. Um, and we need to kind of think about these in, you know, we can't even really think about it in the long run anymore. Because so much of the speed is so fast that the, the short run is really what we most need to set attention. I think that um, if the audience is looking a little bit hungry, um, and so, I think that we, um, we are not doing Q&A, we didn't plan Q&A, uh, so hopefully if you have any questions, we can cover that during lunch, but maybe I'll just invite um, my panel members to close with any comments um, before we head up. Okay, like uh, what was more, you say that we cannot really like, predict what, uh, what misuse can be done. Actually, well, uh, there are things we know for sure they're wrong. For instance, when you start to make a fake video or like uh, to serve a certain political agenda, well, we can even with AI to do that. You can see that during, I don't know, like in the, I think it was in Bosnia, like uh, years ago, like they were manipulating images, making some, like, like some fake news out of this. Now it makes it more easy to do. So we know already that this has to be regulated now because it already exists. Um, and there are plenty of problems in it that will come in the future. There are some of them are already here, they, they basically, like when you see copyright infringement, what is the network you can create a source of data. So imagine if you ask the painting of Mario with the style of Banda. How many percentage of Banda is there? How many percentage of Nintendo Mario is there? You know, and this is what people are trying to design using technology on 20 years. So, uh, I think that. Um, yeah, I think the, I'm the one that works in AI, so I'm very positive on AI ethics. But then I'm just worrying about one thing, really, is privacy. So, like the internet, if 
when we start something, many things we don't have standard, but if the art of life is, is standardized by one standard, then it's just too hard. So the life of the human life is, is, can be varied by the many aspects. If we just do it first to the end, it's so stressful. Okay? But AI, in certain bad aspects, it gives a correct answer. ChatGPT shows a certain answer, it just blows up and it gives a perfect answer with no emotion. So um, if we kind of avoid those bad signs, the AI, I think that we can go okay. Yeah, and then thinking about where we are heading toward uh, the future of AI, I guess the AI will be smarter and smarter. Your virtual assistants will be smarter in the future. However, we still need to uh, keep our eyes on where we are heading toward because there is algorithm and it may generate some unexpected, surprising negative outcome, so we need to be always conscious, especially when we are commercialized those technologies. So I think that is why U.S. senators and the many European governments um, ask for the companies to uh, be more conscious when they are implementing AI technologies for their products and services. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you everybody for coming. Thank you for my panelists for joining me on the stage today to discuss the AI and society. Again, we'll be around during lunch if you want to chat with us. Um, I think uh, I'll hand it back over to you. Let's see what we'll